What's up, guys? Little with Max S here. Uh, I was going to talk some UFC stuff. So, um, dead gum. Jorge Masvidal versus Kamara Usman. Finally, Jorge has posted something about his fight with uh, Karma Usman. I don't think there's going to be barely any trash talking at all in this fight. Like, um, I know it's going to be a huge selling fight because Jorge has risen to that star status, star level status, uh, which few people have. Uh, like, I would put Jorge, his rise to fame up there with Brock Lesnar, Conor McGregor. And I'm talking about people who cause casual fans, whatever you want to call them, people who don't really watch the UFC, people who cause people who don't watch the UFC to tune in and pay money. Uh, even though these, I'm not saying these are the best fighters whatsoever, because George St. Pierre, you know, uh, he had trouble selling outside. Sorry, I'm fixing my table as we talk. There's a table leg broke here, and I finally fixed it, whatever. But George St. Pierre, there's barely, I'll talk to people at work who don't really watch MMA or boxing or anything like that. They have no clue. I hate to say it. They have no clue who George St. Pierre is. Uh, when I say Conor McGregor, boom, instantly. People are like, oh, yeah, Conor McGregor. When I say Ronda Rousey, instantly. Yes, Ronda Rousey. Brock Lesnar the same way. I'm trying to think of other people. Uh, it's hard. You know, um, when I say Khabib Nurmagomedov, I can't even say his last name, but when I say him, people are like, I have no idea who you're talking about. And I'm like, you know, the Russian dude that's like smashing everybody. You know, he's a lightweight. And they're like, I, I think I've heard about him. So not even Khabib's at that level. I know he's a huge, massive fighter. He's the greatest ever. I'm going to get a lot of hate for saying that. But, I mean, seriously, go to your workplace and mention Khabib to somebody. More than likely, you'll get people to be like, I don't know who you're talking about. And then you could say Conor McGregor, and they'll be like, oh, yeah. Or Ronda Rousey. Oh, yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. Uh, superstar status. Jorge Masvidal isn't quite there yet. Uh, I haven't actually mentioned him at work to see if this would work out, but he's getting there. If Jorge Masvidal beat Kamara Usman uh, in some kind of crazy fashion, yes, uh, he, he would probably... I don't even know if that would get him to the level. It, it would get him up there. People would start... People who don't watch the sport. That's the thing for me. I grew up watching MMA. My dad used to uh, buy the... Or, or he would rent the VHSs from Blockbuster and we'd watch the uh, the UFC pay-per-views and all that. Um, so I want people who don't watch fighting and all that, I want them to be interested in the UFC. And we don't really have a star right now that does that besides... Connor's coming back. You know, if he loses again, it's it's probably going to be like, you know, he's going to just go off and, and enjoy his money and sell his whiskey. Uh, he's doing good, but we don't really have anybody right now that reaches that star status. I don't know why I got off on this sidetrack of star status and all that. Sometimes my mind wanders, and that's the way I go. But Jorge Masvidal, um, he's almost there. I want him to get there. He's almost there. I rented uh, Jorge Masvidal versus uh, uh, Nate Diaz in Guam, and I told everybody that I saw. I texted people, and I was like, hey, I've got uh, Jorge Masvidal versus uh, Nate Diaz in the lobby right now for free. All you got to do is show up and watch it. There was literally people down in the swimming pool that could get out of the swimming pool and walk upstairs and come watch, and they didn't want to do it. There was a couple people that stopped and like, what are you watching? I was like, oh, it's, the, it's for the uh, BMF title. And they're like, oh, yeah, I heard about this. Because The Rock bought, brought a lot of eyes. You know, as much as people hated him being there, like the professional MMA fans, the professional watchers, uh, they didn't really, from what I saw, they didn't really care for The Rock being there. 
But The Rock brought a lot of eyes on that fight that wouldn't know about it otherwise. Because a lot of... You don't realize how many... And that's why Dana was like, yeah, get The Rock on here. Because you don't re realize how many people watch his Instagram and stuff like that. And he gave a lot of exposure to that fight. But I couldn't... That's crazy to me. A fan of MMA as I've been for so long. And I'm not on... I'm a casual watcher. You know, people... Like, oh, you're a casual. Yeah, because uh, it's entertainment to me. Even though I grew up watching it, it's entertainment, and I, I casually watch it. I don't follow everybody. There's this Dominic Reyes guy fighting John Jones, and I barely have a clue who he is. He's about to fight one of the greatest mixed martial artists of all time. Uh, I say that even though I don't 100% agree with that, but there's no denying John Jones is unstoppable. Uh, but I don't even know who this Dominic Reyes guy is at all. It's not a pay-per-view I'm going to buy unless they put some... I don't buy John Jones' pay-per-views when he fights people. I have no clue who they're talking about. When they're like, oh, he's fighting this other guy. I'm like, where did this guy come from? Oh, I come from some other fight league. Like, whatever. I'm not buying that. You, you got to give me something to invest in. I don't invest in John Jones' fights anymore. Once again, I got off the, the track. But, um... So I couldn't even get people to walk up a flight of stairs to come watch for the BMF title. And whenever I would rent a Conor McGregor pay-per-view, people would flock to my house to watch it. Uh, people would actually, I actually made my money back on the pay-per-view buy. And, you know, people would come in and be like, here's $20. I'd be like, nah, don't worry about it. And they're like, no, I want to watch Conor McGregor and I want to feel good about it. Here's $20. I'm like, all right, whatever. And I'd make my money back and... Uh, Jorge's not quite there yet, but I think he's getting there. I want him to get there. I don't want my last video I did with Jorge being scared to fight Usman. I don't want that to, to for people to think I'm hating on Jorge Masvidal. I've watched him for a very long time. I was mad when he took his little break, even though it was a great thing, turns out, for him. But um, I want him to get to that star-level status. I want the UFC to get put back. In the mainstream again, even though there's a lot of professional fans, professional UFC watchers that uh, don't want it to be mainstream. Mainstream sells. Mainstream makes your company grow. You bring a lot of new fighters in that you've never heard of. Uh, a lot of young talent. You can pay them better. Uh, people don't understand. Like A lot of people will get mad when a company, they call it selling out. It starts making money. What you don't realize is the more money that company makes... The more they can expand, expand, the more fighters they can get, all that stuff. But uh, that's another story. My back really hurts right now. For some, that probably looked really weird. Ah. Um, I had a a busy day at work. I wouldn't say a tough day, but a busy day. But anyways, my back hurts now. Um, anyways, I wanted to clear up. I still think Kamara Usman will destroy. I might. Eat my words, and I will sincerely apologize on this camera. Uh, Kamara Usman, I think, is going to destroy Jorge Masvidal if they fight. I almost feel like this fight won't happen. I feel like that uh, uh, Jorge's kicks, like, I feel like Kamara Usman is set up for those kicks. Um, but I... I if it goes past the first round, I know Jorge's got, he's insanely tough. He has insane cardio. But once Kamaru, I think Kamaru, what I vision the fight, the way I see it playing out is that Kamaru's going to make Jorge think that he's going to stand up with him. He's probably going to crack uh, Jorge. Jorge's probably going to crack um, Kamaru. And then I think Kamaru Usman is going to take down Jorge Masvidal and just dominate from the top. That's just the way I see it playing out. The way I saw, even though people are like, Tyrone Woodley was not the Tyrone Woodley that we know. Kamar Usman just insanely dominated him. And, and Tyrone Woodley's not a striker. He's a very powerful hitter, but he's not a striker whatsoever. He's a wrestler who can throw powerful shots, can use powerful leg kicks, but he's not really a striker whatsoever. Um... But Kamar Usman just held him down and did whatever he wanted to. 
to him. I, I just don't think Jorge Masvidal is going to be able to match Kamaru Usman's skill level. I just can't see it. Maybe if Jorge can stuff the takedowns and stay on the outside. I mean, you got to think like Jorge Masvidal has an amazing leg, uh, not leg kick, but an amazing body kick. That just whip he throws to the body. It's so fast, so powerful. I think that would do him justice against Kamaru Usman. That would that would do him well. But uh, Kamaru, if, if he catches that leg, and I know they're going to train for that. They're going to train Kamaru for, for catching that leg every time Jorge throws it. Uh, and Jorge's going to have to try and lean on the jab to keep Kamaru Usman on the outside. But K Kamaru Usman also has a very nice... Uh, jab, and he's actually a very technical striker. So I just don't see Jorge Masvidal winning that fight. I, I wouldn't. I, I wouldn't say I would see him getting finished. I don't know if uh, Kamara Usman could finish Jorge Masvidal, but uh, if he could, it would be a TKO stop. TKO. I can't speak right now. It would be a TKO stoppage from the top, with Kamaru just smothering and destroying. Jorge Masvidal, but I just don't see Jorge winning that fight whatsoever. Not at all. Um, I will buy that fight. And I think a lot of people will buy that fight. If like Usually when I do UFC pay-per-views at my house and invite people, it's a big card. And um, that's possibly going to be one that I invite people. Now, just telling you honestly, I don't think a whole lot of people will show up for that. Because nobody knows who Kamara Usman is. He doesn't talk smack. He's kind of boring in his press conferences. And his fights aren't that... I mean, they're they're not like... He's not just dropping people, you know? Like, it would be insane if he come out and him and Tyrone had an exchange and he just dropped Tyrone. He was doing that over and over. I think that was the hype behind Connor because he was just dropping dudes over and over and over. Uh, it was ridiculous. Um... I don't know if we'll see that again. I know I do know that people don't want to come watch, um, which I haven't bought very many of his fights. Uh, I just said Khabib. Um, I do know people will not come watch Khabib. And I get it. Like, you kind of want to see, like, Khabib smash, and can somebody stop Khabib from smash? You know, that's kind of intriguing, but people don't want to watch that. They don't want to watch him hold a guy down and... And I get it, you know, that's where all the skill is and stuff. But I'm just saying, from an entertainment perspective, I like to entertain people in my house and let them watch fights. And if Khabib's just going to hold a guy down and, and just kind of smash, you know, people don't really want to see that. They want to see the knockouts. They want to see the ground exchanges. They want to see a guy go to the ground, wrestle and all that, and then the other guy kind of figure out how to get back up, and they get back up to the feet. That's exciting. Um... But when you have a guy like Khabib who just smash, and he does that five rounds in a row, smash, you know, for all five rounds, it's like, ah, this isn't really. I like watching it alone, you know what I'm saying, where I could sit there and concentrate and be like, oh, wow, he did this on the ground and this happened. But when I'm entertaining people, it's not what I want to. It kind of leads into my my next thing, the Jones versus uh, Reyes. Dominic Reyes, isn't that his name? I don't know. Who knows who this guy is? This is, I'm not going to watch this fight. I don't think anybody's going to watch this fight. They better stack this card. I know John Jones is still a pretty big draw. I don't know how big a draw he is. I do know that people, whenever I mention John Jones at work or around people who don't really watch him in May, they're like, oh yeah, John Jones, you know, he's the guy who's undefeated and all that. And I'm like, yeah. And that's about as far as that goes. I'll be like, well, I'm going to pay, I'm going to rent his fight. Uh, this weekend, you want to come over? Like, God, no, I got like, I I got to go stare at like my wall. Like, what what's your wall gonna be doing? I don't know, but I got to stare at that instead of watching John Jones fight some guy. Nobody knows who he is. I'm sure I'm gonna get hate and just be like, you don't know who Ray's is. He's the freaking greatest person ever. Well, I'm watching a press conference with him, and he is just not entertaining. He can't string together words. It's just not entertaining. We need. Someone like Chel Sonnen to come back. The bad guy. When Chel, everybody bought that fight, Chel Sonnen versus John Jones, even though we knew Chel Sonnen didn't stand a chance versus John Jones, 
John Jones went through this period where he he fought a lot of fighters, great fighters past their prime, and people are like, oh my God, John Jones is the greatest. I'm like, yeah, he's beating up a bunch of old guys who are well past their prime. Uh, I mean, they might as well call him the re re retirement fighter. He retires people. Yeah, because they're in their 50s. No, I'm just kidding, but whatever. We need somebody to come back like Chel Sonnen that could talk smack, that could actually stand a chance. You'd be like, oh, wow, this guy really could stand a chance. I like how Tito comes out and says, I could beat John Jones. It's like, Tito, you just need to just go somewhere, dude. Go somewhere, sit down. You know, drink, drink, like, enjoy your mansion, drink your lemonade or whatever you do. You just sit down somewhere, basically. You don't need to be fighting John Jones. He's already retired a bunch of old fighters past their prime. And Tito, maybe Tito should be next. Be like, Tito, you fight John Jones, make that paycheck and go away. Nobody wants to, it, it, Tito has some of the worst trash talk on the planet, too. So that, that would be in the cringe level. Apparently, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to continue watching this UFC 247 Jones vs. Ray's uh, press conference, and apparently the cringe level is insanely high because this Ray's guy, John Jones is a pretty cringy guy, but this Ray's guy apparently can't string together a sentence in his his disses against John Jones. I just mix John Jones together. John's, John's, I'm going to start calling him that from now on, but whatever. I, if anybody's watching this right now, there's there's no way, but... If you are watching this, post something like, what country is this? I think it's, is it Africa? No, no. Oh, it is Africa. Ha! Post Africa. Anyways, appreciate y'all watching. Check me out, SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter. Like always, check me out on the streets.